This looks really complicated, <clears throat> but if you understand the basic theory, it's not that complicated. I'm using a brand new instrument voltage limiter. Uh, this is an electronic one from real-time engineering. Um, it works very similar to the factory, where the factory limiter was a bimetal device that um, heated up and then snapped open, cooled, heated up, snapped open, and it was a pulsing device. It took 12 volts uh, through the pulsing, you know, on, off, on, off, brought it down around 5-ish. Uh, this is doing the same thing, except it's electronic. There's no moving parts inside. Should be a little more reliable. Now, um, I'm using this as my power source because these instruments all run on 5 volts. Now, 5 volts is kind of the standard for these, um, but they're actually using a pulse DC, which is somewhere around 5 volts. So if you try to measure it with a meter of some kind, especially digital, um, you're going to get odd readings because it's not AC and it's not DC. And uh, the meter's got settings for AC and, and, and DC, and that really isn't either of them. Um, so on the DC setting, you will get a better reading. And uh, let's do that right now. It's on DC. I'm going to scale it down using the range button. You can see the decimal point move. Um, Let's put it down around there and it won't be quite so sensitive. Now this is the positive from the voltage limiter. And I'm going to go to negative oh, right here, I guess. Uh, let's go right here. Now you can see it's kind of 2, 4, 12. It's all over the place. It's doing the same thing the factory bimetal voltage limiter did. But... Um, it's doing it electronically. So as long as you're seeing a pulse like that, you know, and, and you're getting a higher number as well as a lower number, you know you're somewhere in the middle. It's supposed to average out around 5 volts. And that's what this is, is doing. Now, to actually see the scale, what we're looking for here is a number that is going to be between 10 ohms, where are we at here, at full scale, and 73 ohms at empty, or lowest temperature, empty fuel tank, lowest oil pressure. Uh, as far as I can tell, the gauges are all scaled the same, even regardless of the gauge size. Um, they all range the same on these Mopar. Uh, this is for a 73 71 to 73, uh, 71 to 74 are all the same, and even the earlier ones, from what I've seen, are still using the same scale factor. 23 should be right around uh, mid-range of the scale, 23 ohms. So, I've got this uh, rheostat here, and it's hooked up to... Let's use the gasoline gauge here. I marked which terminal is positive so I don't screw up. So the other one is going to be the negative. The positive is going to be getting your power from the instrument voltage regulator. These clips plug into the positive side of all the gauges. So I just grab power off of one of them. So I'm going to hook the rheostat here. I don't know if you can see it over here which is going to take the place of either the fuel sender or the oil pressure sender and the coolant temperature sender. Um, it is set for 23 ohms. So I'm going to hook the negative up, and then I've got to hook the positive to the output of the voltage limiter, which is over here. And uh, there's positive. I'm going to hook that up and we should see the see the needle starting to move. 
Now, this, this gauge has not been completely calibrated. I did check it. It goes full scale, and it was sitting at, you know, zero. And uh, so let's see where it lands here, where it should be around mid mid range. And this is uh, like watching grass grow, waiting for these gauges to settle out. Um, once it gets close, you can see it just creeping now, and that's going to keep getting slower and slower over the next 30 seconds or so. And uh, you can see it's really slowing down. We're just about mid-scale right there. Now it's going up over it a little bit, but these gauges were never spot-on accurate like a newer car today is. These gauges are using technology from the 20s and 30s, basically. It hasn't changed. And... Uh, as far as a you know electrical an electrical gauge goes, um, so yeah, this one is not too far off. You know, for 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 being mid range, it's pretty close. I can live with that. It's still in the mid, still in the middle there. So now that we know that, uh, get the camera. Now that we know that is pretty close. I'm going to switch from mid-range to a little tool I made from an old um, fuel sender. You know, this has got stops here. And I've adjusted this one. Let's go to the ohm scale, and I'm going to show you what I did to this one. This is the... Um, input to this little gate to the sender and that's going to one side of the resistor and it's basically the same device as this where we turned it and it's got a wiper that runs across this wound coil the wiper is right there it runs across this coil both ends of the coil are here so when this wiper is all the way down here you're reading zero ohms as you start to go up, the resistance of the wire increases. When you get all the way to the end here, from here to here is 100 ohms. So in the middle would be 50, and over here is 23 is where I've got it set. That's how a rheostat works. You've got a wire-wound resistor and a wiper that can you know, uh, run the, the, the full length of it and give you a resistance anywhere from zero to full scale, which on this one is 100 ohms. This is the same thing. Uh, inside is that wire wound and a little wiper that runs on it. And where's my other terminal here? And it uses the case as the uh, other side of the circuit. Now, we've, we're sitting here at 10 ohms, 10.3, and this thing is not accurate, but um, it's close. 10.2, that should be... Uh, that should be full tank. 10 ohms is, is full tank. And uh, I've got this one adjusted down here. This little stop is 72 ohms. Now, wiggle it around a little bit. We might get, you know, it's, it keeps giving us different numbers, but we're really close to 73. So at 73, it should be empty. Now, let's put this one in our circuit now that we know what the values of it are. And you can adjust this, fine-tune this with these uh, little tabs right here. All right, let's get this one in our circuit. So we need the negative, which is here. And that's going to go to our isolated terminal here, which goes into the resistor in there. And now we need ground or battery negative going to the case, which is here. And if I can get this thing to stand up. Let's see what we're going to get. Now that is going to go to full scale. And that was our 10 ohms. 
and once they get close, you got to give these, if you're really doing a calibration, you got to give this gauge time to uh, finally reach its, its uh, set point, you know, and uh, stable out there. It takes longer than I'm going to stand here and watch this thing, but you guys get the idea. Um, so right here, we're almost full. Now to actually calibrate this, I would use a resistor or that rheostat there because this thing is not that accurate. But it's pretty close. If that's all you've got, I would use it. Now this gauge does need to be calibrated a little bit. We're not going all the way full. But if you, if you can see it there, it's still creeping upward. And if we give it enough time, it might go all the way to full and not require any adjustment. Now the same thing, I'm not going to wait for it. It might go all the way, I'm not going to wait. I'm coming down here now to the empty scale, and this takes forever as well. It's going to, it's going to slowly come down. And uh, once we get down to the bottom there, I'll show you where the calibration takes place on the back of the gauge. Um, when you're calibrating an instrument, and this is pretty much across the board, you know, even if you're in industrial processes or these simple car, th car deals, you need two points to get an accurate adjustment. You need empty and full is the best, or your lowest scale and your highest scale uh, to get the most accurate reading out of your instrument. Um, when you change one side, it also changes the other side just a little bit. So it's kind of a dance between adjust your low end, then check your high end. You're going to have to move that just a hair, then check your low end, and that's going to require you know maybe another slight adjustment. Keep going back and forth a few times until you get the, ga the instrument where you want it, you know, where you're reading pretty close at both ends. And your mid-range should fall right in line if you do that. Now you can kind of think of that as the empty being connected to one side of a rubber band, the full being connected to the other. When you make an adjustment on the rubber band, you're moving the needle up a little closer to full, but it also pulls the bottom side a little over a little bit. So you got to go to the bottom side and pull it back a little bit with the adjustment there, which is pulling on the top side. And you got to keep going back and forth until you get the instrument right where you want it. Now this one here is probably actually pretty close. If we give it 30 seconds, a minute to settle out, I think we're right on the money. I'm not going to make an adjustment to this one until I give it the time it needs to settle out. But I'm going to show you where the adjustments are. On the back of these Mopar gauges, you've got you know, a little star uh, wheel inside here. And you've got one down here. Now one adjusts one side of the, the um, there's a spring and a, like a bimetal heater in here. And um, one adjusts one side of that deal and the other one adjusts the other side. So as you're making your adjustments, um, make a small adjustment and see what happens to the needle. Now I'm going to, I haven't done the oil pressure gauge yet, so I'm going to make an adjustment here and you can see the needle move. See, I got to get in there. Yeah, where can you see it there? You got to get in there and just tweak that a little bit. And as I tweak it, you can see that the, the needle is moving. And you can put this anywhere you want it. So, you know, especially with oil pressure, you don't really want that to be wrong. Um, if your gauge is way out of adjustment, you could have no oil pressure and still showing good oil pressure. Or at the other side of the scale, you could, the gauge could be showing extremely high oil pressure and your oil pressure is normal. So calibrating the gauge is, is a pretty good thing to do on these old cars. You can send your cluster into a shop who's going to charge you four figures to overhaul your gauges. And most of them don't like to just calibrate and send back. They want to do the whole job, the new faces, uh, recoding the, the, the needles and all of that. But calibrating the gauge, you can do that at home.
just like I'm showing you here. Now, I hope that was informational. Um, I hope it was understandable. I'm going to move the camera up and try to give you a little better understanding here of what's going on right here. Let's see here. It'll be marked ignition, and the other one on this is not marked. You do not want to mess up which side gets ignition power and which side is the output. Um, on a factory one, if you can read it here, it says ignition right here above my thumb. And on this side, it doesn't say anything either. So ignition, that's your 12-volt your positive, goes in, into the ignition terminal. And it's also the one that uses this little capacitor here. It's kind of like a filter uh, to clean up the, the, the voltage going in there, you know, to stabilize it. So do not cross that or you will fry the uh, little uh, voltage limiter and I have to pull another 50 bucks out of your pocket. So be very careful when you're hooking this up. Don't get your, your, your wires crossed. Uh, ignition is your 12 volt positive. Now what I'm doing here is drawing 12 volt positive. Let me back back out. I'm drawing 12 volt positive off of a battery. 12 volt positive goes in here, powers that. Got my light flashing. That's very simple. The output here is um, the normal output that would come out of the limiter, and it goes to all the gauges. I'm jumping off that and going to the positive terminal of the gauge. Now, I just put the gauge in the cluster. On the backs of these clusters, you can see it's color-coded. Uh, this is gray. That one's not marked. That's blue. That one's not marked. You know, blue here, gray here. Those are the ones that go out to the sender, sending unit. These power source go to the ones that's not marked. So put the gauge in the cluster and you, you'll know right away that's your power. This is your sender. So mark positive on the back of your gauge to, I did, to, so you know which one is the power when you're going to calibrate. Now it also needs a negative, and it ha this one has a little uh, negative terminal, you know, that, that's built on. Some of them have another terminal on the cluster up here somewhere, or the cluster itself is negative. That has to go to battery negative. Now your instrument, it draws power off of the limiter into the instrument. From the instrument, it goes to your sending unit. And on the car, the sending units are all grounded. They're grounded to the engine, grounded to the chassis. We're bringing that case of the sender back to battery negative. That's how you, that's how you do this. And I know this was quick and it was fast. I hope you understand it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the bottom. And don't forget to like and subscribe to Big Paul's Garage. I want to go to... Uh, that no name thing and I need more subscribers. Got to hit 500. I'm not even halfway there. So help me out guys. Thanks.